It's the Scotty Meyer Show. Hey there, welcome to the show. Hopefully you're having a fantastic week. Uh, good to uh, have you back. And uh, wherever you're getting us, whether that's iTunes, iHeartRadio app, we're on there now, Spotify, Podbean, uh, so many places you can find the show. Just do us the favor, wherever you're listening to us, give us that old rating and review. It helps, uh, helps promote the show just a little bit. So the last couple of weeks, I was talking about living in home reno hell. I can actually say I'm out of home reno hell now. The bathroom has been completed. The ceiling is done. I got a little bit of painting left to do, but you know what? I will take it. From where we were with the mess and not having a bathroom upstairs. So in the middle of the night, if you had to take a leak, our other bathroom is in the basement. So you're running down a couple of stories uh, just to drain the lizard. Kind of annoying. So thankfully, we are finally out of that. And it was really funny. We uh, did some pre-work on the bathroom before the actual reno started. And uh, when the guy came in to work on it at the end and he was going over it, he, he's sitting there and he's like, uh, who did the caulking around your around your bathtub? And I said, oh, my wife did that. Uh, yeah, she, she did that when she was off on, on work. He goes, man, it, she, uh, she did a fantastic job. She, I know plumbers that can't do jobs that good. She's really good with caulk. And I was like, well, that's why I married her. And uh, he kind of looked at me funny, you know, but this, she did. She did a fantastic job. And I married her because she's so good at home renovations. Because I'm not. I suck. Anyway, uh, so I had this weird thing happen on Monday. It wasn't weird to me so much as it just, I was actually kind of impressed with the guy. I'm doing my, my spin class at the gym and I go to a super early one and we get done and the guy that, that teaches the class, he uh, he gets off the bike and everybody's kind of talking and he's still talking to, to everybody in the class a bit. And he goes, so it was week two with uh, my toupee and it hasn't slipped off or fallen off yet. He goes, I, I think that's a win. And I just kind of looked at him in awe because the first few times I'd gone to the class, he had a hat on. So I just, when I saw him with hair, I didn't think that he didn't have hair previously. And really, I, I looked at him in awe because I was impressed with him just owning that. Because I put myself in that situation and I was kind of like, you know what? I think I would be doing everything under the sun to hide that. Like if I decided that being bald wasn't for me and I went down the road of, of getting some sort of hair piece or, or transplant or something like that. I think I would be trying to keep it quiet. Just my own personal thing. Like, uh, you know, I know a lot of people that do it. I have some friends that have some hair pieces and whatnot. And uh, I kind of like, you know, like they, they tend to be not so upfront about it. I was super impressed with how this guy just owned it and threw it out there right on, uh, right on the front street like that. And uh, yeah, so really good on him. Because like myself, even now... I have things about my body where I'm I'm not into sharing, really. Like I have to go to a a retreat with a bunch of other uh, coworkers, and they were sending us the list of things to bring, and they're like, "You're going to have full access to the pool and all that, so feel free to bring your your swim trunks along and and you know take a swim and all that kind of stuff." I instantly in my head was like, "No." No way am I going to do that. I was more comfortable doing that when I weighed a lot more. Now I'm even less comfortable taking my shirt off in public. My body looks like a melting candle. There's a lot of loose skin. I get, I get laundry flapping in the breeze, basically. So I'm, I'm just kind of sitting there going, no, I don't think, don't think I'm going to swim with, with coworkers. And my wife was like, just wear a shirt. And I was like, no, oh, that's weird too. You know, like well, that's, that's kind of, that looks like an odd thing to do. So I'm going to skip the pool, but that's, there's an example of why I was so just impressed with how this guy just put it out there and, and owned his hairpiece situation. So kudos to him. Apparently he's got a, a kid on the way, which is also awesome. So another kudos to him. And then one of the people in the class brought up a gift for him of like baby clothes. And then I was like, oh shit. I better get out of here in case they ask me to chip in. 
I've only been to the class a couple times. I'm not that invested in his life. We're not that close. Hell, I just found out that he was uh, had a hairpiece. Moving on, I think we've all had that situation where we read how old something is and we have a hard time believing it. And that was what happened to me today. I was goofing around on the internet looking at uh, different things and found out that this summer would mark the 20th anniversary of Napster. Uh, I know they tried to relaunch it. I don't know if it's still a thing out there or not. But uh, it was initially released June 1st of 1999. And it was uh, basically how people are starting to get free music. It's uh, it's apparently still a thing, still like a streaming service or or something like that, kind of like uh, Spotify or something. But I think the name just has such a bad connotation now for for music that it's it's hard to really get on board with it. But I can remember the days when we didn't think we were doing anything wrong. You know, it was the the early days of the internet. It was, it was back in the day when there was a naivete about the internet, to be honest. Like we didn't think there was anything wrong with just downloading whatever. And whenever you typed in a band and all these songs came up and some of them you'd never heard of before, you were convinced that not only did you now suddenly have access to all the music you knew, but now you had access to these recordings that your favorite bands made and you never even heard of. And you know why you hadn't heard of them? Because most of them were bullshit and fake. (laughs) You'd spend... A lot of time downloading a song comparatively to how quickly it happens now. And then as soon as you started playing it, you'd just be like, that's not Metallica. I use them as an example because they're the ones that that kind of ruin the Napster party for everybody. And at the end of the day, rightfully so. Uh, You know, artists should be paid for the work that they create. So I have no ill will towards Metallica for you know, taking Napster to court and doing what they did. It was just such a weird time in the internet. It was a wild, wild west. There were no rules. And for most of us that were kind of new to it, we didn't know what was right, what was wrong. And as I said, it was a naive time in the internet. You'd get on these file sharing sites like uh, Napster, LimeWire, or any of these big ones, and you'd search for things and you would believe it. Like if you searched in like, You know, some hot actress nude that never did a nude scene and tons of files would come up and it'd be like, you know, Britney Spears naked or whatever. And you'd be like, oh my God, I got to look at that. And it would be the worst Photoshop job. (laughs) It'd be like a black and white grainy photo and the head would be tilted at a wrong angle. It was almost like exorcist porn on some level. It was very bizarre. I'm not saying sometimes those fake pictures didn't get you through the night, but it was weird is my point. Now we've gone the other way with the internet where we think everything is fake. So it's, it's almost to the point now where you could release a bunch of nudes and all you have to do is say they're fake. And then people are like, yeah, I heard, I, I heard those ones were fake. So it's so funny how the internet has swung entirely the other way. So if you ever see nudes of me on the internet, I will tell you right now, they are fake. Unless you like what you see. Moving on to the off story of the week. The story that makes you just say, oh, for fuck's sakes. Uh, This one coming to us from the southern United States, which uh, this story could only happen in the southern United States, we've all seen sales promotions, right? You know, you go into a store and they'll have an item and they're like, buy this, get this one free. And sometimes it does entice you to pick up a particular item. It's attractive. Hey, I'm getting something for free. So a car dealership in Alabama decided to run what I would say is a very unique promotion. Here's what they were offering. We're going to be celebrating July 4th a little bit differently this year. Everyone that comes into our dealership and purchase a new pre-owned or certified pre-owned car, truck, or SUV, they're also going to get a Bible, an American flag, and also a 12-gauge shotgun. I think one of those three would have been enough, like your choice of, perhaps? Uh, Like the Bible, fine, whatever. The flag I get, July 4th is right around the corner, right? It's a patriotic sale. The shotgun... I 
don't really understand. And then what happens? Like you sign the papers and then uh, here's your Bible, here's your flag, here's your shotgun. And then the guy that just bought the truck, goes, I won't be paying for that truck. Uh, <laughs> just, you know, what are they supposed to drive off the lot, firing it off into the sky because of the wicked deal they just got? This is why people do the America and make fun of the Southern United States. Only in a place like Alabama would you offer up a Bible, a flag, and a gun with a new Ford vehicle or used car. Doesn't even have to be new. New or used, we'll give you a gun. We don't care. And Ford got wind of this and they shut it down. I'm sure that is not sitting well with some people in Alabama. I can see the discussions around the coffee table now going, Darling, do you see what happened there? Ford ain't giving us our shotguns anymore. You know what? I bet you they like that Hillary Clinton. Oh, she wanted to take our guns. Now Ford don't want me to have my guns. I'm going to buy me a Chevrolet. That's real American. American is Chevrolet. Apple pie and Chevrolet, that's what they say. And Chevrolet wants me to have my guns. I guarantee you that. It is my God-given right as a Southern American to have guns, trucks, and methamphetamine. I swear to God, that's what the Constitution says. That's what the Bible says. That's what it said in that Bible that that dealership was going to give me. That's kind of how I see a lot of the conversations uh, going. The dealership has abided by Ford's decision, and they are canceling the promotion. However, they do say they will fulfill all commitments that they made to their customers. So if you're listening, you're one of the lucky ones that got in under the wire and and they owe you a Bible, a flag, and a shotgun, you're still going to get it. So you will still have a raucous honeymoon with your cousin wife. Before we get into the geek news of the week, I got a couple of movie reviews for you, uh, both killer doll movies. I'm amazed how many horror movies are, uh, are hitting the screen this summer. But uh, I'll start with the Child's Play reboot because... I was a little nervous about this when they announced it a while ago. Just Child's Play is such a great movie. Uh, Brad Dorif did such a great job with the voice of Chucky that I was very worried about kind of what uh, they would do to Child's Play uh, when it was all said and done. And I can honestly say they did a fantastic job with it. I was very impressed with uh with what they did it's overall really fun it does drag a little bit at times but it's got some real great old school 80s style horror movie kills you know kind of the over the top kills there's a couple of those in there which were fun to see mark hamill delivers a fantastic performance as the new voice of chucky he gives a a friendly yet menacing voice it, and, and all at the same time. It, it's really, really well done. And if you're a fan of like 80s horror and 80s Orion movies, the old movie studio, there's a couple of really cool Easter eggs in there. There's a RoboCop one that uh, stands out a lot, but I loved RoboCop, so that made me happy. Uh, it's definitely worth checking out. If you were hesitant about seeing the Child's Play reboot, I would say don't be. Uh, go see it. And I'm hoping that this team continues, makes another one because they did a great, great job uh, with the Child's Play reboot. And the other one is Annabelle Comes Home, the third Annabelle flick. I think this is what, the fifth or sixth Conjuring Universe movie. And this was fun too. I think I dug Child's Play a little bit more, but uh, Annabelle Comes Home had some really cool creatures that you got glimpses of. They really kind of delved into a little bit of the Warren's uh, case files to create a few other creatures. So even though Annabelle is kind of the main antagonist of the film, there are a couple of other really cool ghosts that pop up throughout the story. And it's more of a ghost film than like a a slasher flick like child's play. So it does have you on your edge of your seat at times. There are some legitimately good laughs in it and uh, it is worth checking out as well. I'm always amazed they get different filmmakers, different writers on these conjuring movies like the nun and, and the different Annabelle ones and that, and they've all been pretty solid. They have built a really good universe there. And I know they're working on a, a sequel to the nun and also the conjuring three and, uh, They've they've said some of the 
characters in Annabelle Comes Home could get their own films. Uh, there's one guy in there called the Fairy Man that I think uh, he, he would make an awesome character uh, for a film. So it looks like the Conjuring universe is not going to be slowing down anytime soon. So if horror is something you love, uh, you definitely have a couple of solid, solid options to go check out right now. And both killer dolls, you know what? Make a night out of it. Go see one and then go see the other back to back. Old school double feature. That would be uh, worthwhile. On to the geek news of the week. And when we talk about movies, of course, Avengers Endgame, roughly around $40 million away from topping Avatar as the highest grossing film of all time. And they really, really want that title. So they are re-releasing it. It's going to hit theaters this weekend. And we're starting to get a little bit more info on that extra seven minutes of footage that they've uh, promised in this re-release. Now, we knew there was a Stan Lee tribute in there, so we knew that was part of it. Uh, there's also a Spider-Man Far From Home setup slash teaser, and also a scene that supposedly involves and centers around the Hulk. So if you're a huge fan of the Hulk from Avengers Endgame, you'll get to see some more of him in this re-released uh, edition. And the cast of Avengers Endgame really want to take that title from Avatar 2. So they've been tweeting out uh, their support and their kind of plea for you to go see the re-release. Uh, Chris Evans had a tweet, as did Robert Downey Jr., saying, you know, go check out this re-release. Uh, basically, uh, not begging, but really encouraging you to go check it out. I love that there's extra stuff in there. I just think this looks a little desperate on their part. It, it, it does. There's no other way around it. But I am curious to see that Stan Lee tribute, so I might be there. In the rumor mill of upcoming films, of course, we know Robert Pattinson is going to be the Batman in the upcoming Matt Reeves film. And now it seems like Andy Serkis could have a role in that movie. Uh, rumor is that he's up for a role, but we don't know what role that will be. I think there's a couple of uh, roles right off the top of my head that he could easily fit into. It all depends on if he's going to be villain or good guy. He could be a Commissioner Gordon type. He definitely uh, fits that mold. He could also easily be the Penguin if he wanted to be. He could be Mad Hatter. When I look at him, the character that really jumps out to me is Hugo Strange. But now some of those characters haven't been rumored for the movie. Uh, rumored would be Catwoman, Riddler, Penguin, Firefly. Uh, so out of those ones, potentially the Penguin. But in my mind, he looks like Hugo Strange. That would be perfect casting. Also sticking with the DC slate of movies. Of course, a lot of people upset over the Swamp Thing TV show being canceled because it is phenomenal. If you haven't checked it out yet, I highly recommend that you do so. And there's been a, uh, an online movement to try and save it. That's still a possibility. I, I don't think they've totally, I know they've canceled it, but I don't think they've closed the door and said like, we would never consider bringing it back. But apparently the heads at DC and Warner Brothers are considering making a Swamp Thing movie. Now, the report that I was reading said it would have nothing to do with the show, so it would be this new standalone feature. But I think because of the passion and support that has been shown online for the character, that the heads of DC are going, you know what, we could make a really good Swamp Thing movie and open that character up to a much larger audience. Uh, of course, James Wan, who directed Aquaman, produced the Swamp Thing TV series. I would imagine they would ask him to stay involved somewhat uh, since he did such a great job there. He could come on as a producer for the movie. But right now, that's just quote-unquote being considered. I'd love to see it happen. Uh, Swamp Thing is such a great character. He deserves the TV show to be successful. He deserves a movie. If you do a movie with him, though, my only request would be Make it the beginning of a Justice League dark series of films. Like get Santana on the big screen, get Dead Man up there, Constantine, you know, all these great mystical characters in the DC universe. Get them on the big screen sooner rather than later. 
Switching over to the latest Star Wars news, the Japanese subtitle of the next installment of the Star Wars franchise has a few fans thinking that we may have an idea on what is going to happen in the movie. Of course, here we know that the subtitle is The Rise of Skywalker, and uh, now we have found out the Japanese subtitle is Dawn of Skywalker. You put that with Poland's Star Wars Skywalker Resurrection, many fans are getting the idea that Episode Nine could pull a major, major twist and bring back Luke Skywalker from his... I guess death when he kind of just disappeared into the force in the last Jedi. Uh, of course we know the emperor has returned. So we know people can come back from the dead. So maybe Luke can too. Mark Hamill's already confirmed that Luke will be back as a force ghost in the film. Um, but who knows? Maybe the rise of Skywalker, Skywalker resurrection, dawn of Skywalker could be Luke coming back from the dead or it could be something else entirely maybe it's my guess maybe anakin comes back from the dead to finally dispatch the emperor once and for all i would like that as an ending and sticking with star wars over in uh, disneyland in california of course galaxy's edge has been open for a little while now and people are enjoying the hell out of it. And people want to be there so much, people are paying for very trivial things on eBay. For example, the coasters from Oga's Cantina, the cards that are handed out to you on the Smuggler's Run Millennium Falcon ride that determine your position on the Falcon, they've been popping up on eBay and fetching a profit. Uh, not only are some of these keepsakes that were never supposed to be on eBay, showing up on eBay, people are flat out stealing things. Like the silverware, I guess, for lack of a better term. The knives, the forks, the spoons from Olga's Cantina. Those are showing up online for sale. So they've uh, started to station an employee at the exit to make sure that all the interstellar cutlery and glassware stays in the cantina and nobody decides to go full smuggler Lando or Han Solo and attempt their own Kessel run for the front gates with any of these, uh, I guess, odd collectibles. I'm heading down, of course, in August to the Florida opening of Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. I'll have a special podcast edition from uh, the, the resort that night after Star Wars Galaxy's Edge opens in Florida. Also, I have a lot of YouTube videos and uh, some other fun stuff if I can, uh, whatever fun stuff I can get my hands on while I'm down there. So uh, make sure that you're subscribed to the podcast so you don't miss the special Galaxy's Edge one. And also check out our YouTube channel, uh, Scotty Mars on YouTube. Uh, subscribe over there as well because we'll have some cool video when we're down there in August. So that will do it for this week. Again, don't forget, wherever you're listening to us, give us that rating and review. It helps promote the show. So whether it's iTunes, Spotify, Podbean, iHeartRadio, uh, any of the podcast uh, devices, do whatever you can. Give it the thumbs up, the five stars. It definitely helps a lot. And if you ever need to reach us, you can. Social media is your friend in this case. Scotty Mars Show on Facebook. Scotty Mars Show on Instagram. At Scotty Mars on Twitter. And until we chat again, have a great week. <laughs>